Hey y'all, this is Carmen with thedoctornurse.com and tonight I want to talk about dosage calculation. So I know that you all probably have dosage calculation tests coming up. You're getting ready to head back to school in a few weeks. So let's talk about dosage calculation tonight and make sure that you know how to tackle those problems without any stress or any worry. Also, I have posted a big, long, very detailed blog post today, just today, um, entitled Five Steps and You'll Never Miss Another Nursing Math Problem, okay? So head over to thedoctornurse.com, check out that blog post if you want a good reference to reference back to that goes along with this video. Those are the steps that I'm going to be going over in the video. So the first step is to know your metric conversions. And by that I mean you've got to know that there are a thousand micrograms in a milligram. You've got to know that there are a thousand milligrams in a gram, okay? So that thing, that sort of thing is, is the thing that you're going to have to know going into your dosage calc exam, okay? They're not going to give you that information. You've got to know that. Um, and I do have a, a big reference list of metric conversions in the blog post. It's under step number one of learn these five steps and never miss another nursing math problem. And so go and check out that blog post and find the metric conversion list under step number one. So we'll go ahead and go to step number two. Um, in step number two, you have got to identify what it is that you are given and what you want to convert to. So let's say, for example, you will be given something like this. The order is for 150 milligrams of Demerol. What you have available is 300 milligrams of Demerol in two milliliters, and they're going to want you to calculate how many milliliters that patient needs to get, all right? So identify what it is that you're given and what you want to convert to. Step number three, put what you are given on the top of a fraction. So in the example that I just referenced, what you are given is 300 milligrams of Demerol in two milliliters, okay? And so you are going to put what you are given on the top based upon what it is that you are looking for, okay? So we are looking for milliliters in that particular example. So you would start out your problem looking like this, milliliters equals, and then whatever it is that you are given goes on top. And in this case, the milliliters, the two milliliters that contains 300 milligrams of Demerol, that two milliliters will go on top because you're looking for milliliters. So the two milliliters will go on the top of that fraction. Then step number four, what you want to convert to goes on top. So you're wanting to convert two milliliters, right? So in that example, again, your milliliters will go on the top of the fraction. And then step number five, just make sure that the way that you set up your problem, um, you're going to set your problem up so that everything is going to cancel out except what you want to end up with, okay? So you want to end up with milliliters in that example. So you would set up the problem so that milligrams or anything else that you don't want to end up with is going to cancel out, all right? So let's work a few problems together with these five steps so you can really get a feel for what I'm talking about. Okay, so here is our first problem. And what we have here is an order for 60 milligrams of solumedrol, and this is IV push. And what you have available is 125 milligrams in two milliliters. So you are going to be looking for how many milliliters are you going to draw up into the syringe to give this patient? So what are we looking for? All right, we are looking for milliliters, okay? So remember when I said that you would start out with milliliters equals. 
All right, so now I know that I've got to put what I'm given on the top of a fraction, and I've got to put what I want to convert to at the top of the fraction. All right, so I'm looking for milliliters, so milliliters is going to go on the top of my fraction. So the only thing in this problem that gives me anything in a milliliter measurement is what I have available here. So I'm gonna set it up like this, two milliliters has 125 milligrams of solumetrol. All right, so that is what I'm looking to convert to milliliters, and that's on the top of my fraction. All right, so what I have to do next is this 60 milligrams has got to factor in somewhere. That's what I'm given. That goes on the top of my fraction also. So I'm gonna put that on top here, and I don't have anything else in this problem to include, so I'm gonna put this over on one. So now, I'm going to cancel out my matching units of measurement. And so that means I'm gonna cancel out my milligrams, so I would be left with milliliters, which that's what I'm looking for, so that is exactly, I've got this problem set up correctly. So we would just multiply this out and you would get 120 here on the top and 125 here on the bottom. And you would just divide 120 by 125. And I know that the answer is 0.96 milliliters because I give this all the time. Um, but this is how you would arrive at the correct answer, okay? Just make sure that by the end of the problem, you have your problem set up to where um, everything cancels out, meaning you've got one on top and one on the bottom. It's all gotta cancel out everything except what it is that we're looking for, okay? And milliliters doesn't cancel out with anything, so we're gonna end up with an answer in milliliters. Let's look at a little bit more complex problem next. All right, so this problem is a little bit more complex than the last one we just worked. This problem is asking us about vancomycin, and it's asking us about um, vancomycin, we have 1.5 grams to run in or infuse over one and a half hours. So we know that anything that has to infuse over a prolonged period like that, we're going to have to put it on an IV pump. And so if we have to put it on an IV pump, then we need to express our answer in milliliters per hour. So what we have ordered up here, vancomycin, 1.5 grams to run in over an hour and a half, we have available 1.5 grams in 250 milliliters. So we're going to set up our problem for what we want, which is milliliters per hour. Since milliliter is on top, we're going to put our milliliter value on top in our very first fraction. So we have 250 milliliters with 1.5 grams, all right, so milliliters matches milliliters. Now we gotta figure out how we're gonna get rid of this gram because that does not factor in to our milliliter per hour, okay? So we don't want that anywhere, so we're gonna have to get that canceled out. So the way that we do that is by then putting what we are given here in grams on top, so our next fraction, is going to be the 1.5 grams of bank to run in over one and a half hours. All right, so we've got the 1.5 grams over the one and a half hours or 1.5 hours. So that gives us um, what we're left with milliliters per hour because the grams cancels out the grams. And if you multiply these out, what you get is 375 over 2.25 here, and that's gonna equal out to 166.7 milliliters per hour. Again, it's one of those things that I've hung a million times, so I just know what the answer is. 
<clears throat> but if you understand this method and these steps, which by the way is called dimensional analysis, then you'll be able to arrive at these correct answers every single time. So let's try one more, even more complex calculation next. Okay, so for our third and final calculation, we are going to do a weight-based calculation. So this is probably one of the more difficult, complex um, problems that you're going to encounter. But again, dimensional analysis, these steps apply to weight-based problems and drips as well. So what we have here is an order for dummy tracks of five micrograms per kilogram per minute. We have a patient weight of 330 pounds, so you automatically know you're going to have to convert this pounds to kilograms, and that's one of those metric conversions that you're just going to need to know. So you would divide 330 by 2.2, and what you would come up with is 150 kilograms. This just this works out perfect. So you would have that already converted. Um, what you have available is one gram in 250 milliliters. That's a typical concentration for um, Dovitrex. So with weight-based calculations, first you're going to want to go ahead and get your pounds converted to kilograms because as you can see, it's mics or micrograms per kilogram per minute. So the patient weight is 150 kilograms. All right, so again, we're looking for uh, an IV infusion over an, uh, an IV pump. So we're looking for milliliters per hour. So you wanna start with putting your milliliters on top, which is the 250 milliliters. that has one gram of Dovitrex. Next, we have got to get rid of this gram. All right, so what you would do, this is how I always work out my weight-based problems. I will go ahead and multiply my 150 times my five micrograms, and that would give me how many micrograms per minute this patient will be receiving. So 150 times five, and I just know this because I've already worked this problem out, is going to give us 955, no it's not, it's going to give us 750, micrograms per minute all right so we still have not gotten rid of our grams so we've got to do quite a bit of converting here and so this is where knowing those metric conversions you're going to need to know those to be able to work these problems correctly so i want to get rid of my micrograms so i know that 1,000 micrograms has one, is in one milligram. So now I've gotten rid of my mics, my micrograms, but I still haven't gotten rid of my grams, still haven't gotten rid of my milligrams, still haven't gotten rid of my minutes, but let's deal with our gram next. So, I have one gram per 1,000 milligrams. So now I've gotten rid of my milligrams and I've gotten rid of my grams. So what am I left with? Milliliters per minute. Nope, I need milliliters per hour. All right, so I've got one more conversion to do before I can do all my multiplying and come up with the correct answer. All right, I know that my minutes has to cancel out. My minutes here is on the bottom, so I've got to put minutes on the top. And there are 60 minutes 
in one hour. So my minutes cancel out there. Everything down the line has canceled out. And what I'm left with is milliliters per hour. And you would multiply these numbers on top and get an incredibly large number and then multiply these numbers on the bottom and get a number and then you would simply divide the top number by the bottom number. Um, now I hope that this little video has been helpful. Again, visit the site, the drnurse.com. Go to the blog and look at the blog that I just posted. It's called Learn These Five Steps and Never Miss Another Nursing Problem. And use those five steps and work through some more practice problems. And just thank you so much for watching tonight. And I hope that you have found this video helpful.